Joe, you talked about your um, your two injuries, your hand and your and your shoulder. Obviously, they haven't damaged your tweeting arm. You've been oh, he's, he's won Twitter, and he you've been you've been going off this week on the Twitter, haven't you? It's been going off a little bit, isn't it? Have you? Because um, you've you've had a wee. Crack a wee, a wee crack I've had it. loads of wees. Yeah, you've had a had a wee crack at Israel Folau. That's that's got you a bit of press, and then you followed it up with a Billy Vonapola tweet. Yep. Have you? First of all, sort of talk us through those those tweets. Um, I think they're quite basic. But I mean, talk us through them. What a little do you mean, bit. basic? I mean, like not He's basic. basically I mean, one Twitter. Ba- they're quite <laughs> basic. I didn't you mean it like basic. Ba- fuck. <laughs> I I mean, a like, lot of effort into that. A lot of thought. Do you cop any heat from that from your club, or are you allowed to just? Tweet that sort of stuff. Does it? I mean, because I know those guys aren't, but you're you're on the same well, topic quite, to I'm, get told that I'm you well are. Well versed in stuff you're not allowed to tweet, um, which I've been reprimanded in the past for. Go on. When I in 2016 called Bob Dwyer a wanker. Oh. Um, <laughs> oh, Joe. Which was obviously out of line <laughs> on Twitter and of and out of character. Um, what the, it, it so was on Twitter, so and then I got a written a warning from the RFU. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, for my misconduct. Or so whatever. what? What kind? Of, what are they saying? Similar to what Billy's got today. So do they say if you do anything like that again, you're going to be sacked, or what? Like how bad's the written warning? They say well, it's well, written right, so down, and it handed on a piece of paper. Well, yeah, it goes, it goes it verbal. It's the same as like any yeah. organisation, I think. Yeah, um, you get a verbal warning, a written warning. And then it's like final warning, like a proper like oi 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 now oi. Last fucking chance, mm. arsehole. And then you like thingy. Um, so why did you call Bob Dwyer a wanker? What was the start? I can't uh, remember the story behind it. Because it was the Australia tour. Yeah. And he was coming three out nil. with art- articles again. It was a 3 nil tour. Yeah. I didn't go on, so I've called <laughs> Oh, fuck. <laughs> but, um, and he loves coming out and slagging the English scrum and he was saying that Coley was cheating and the English are illegal. Classic to try and get... Aussie thing and I was like oh, I'm not having this from afar as a fan watching it I just thought oh Bob Dwyer's a wanker but it turns out that's defamation of character okay and you can legally be sued for stuff like that oh wow had I put I think Bob Dwyer's a wanker you'd have been okay I'd have been alright in a court of law but I'd have still got a written warning so it's probably best to have just taken it down and apologised which I did um so yeah, back to the actual tweets I put out. I just I disagreed with what Israel Folau had put out. Um And rightly so. It's extremist. Mm. Yeah. Well I, It is, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I disagreed with it and I just thought I would um respond in the way I know how. Really, and you're a bit, a bit light-heartedly to try and like. I didn't want to go too heavy, and just be like, "Look, mate, can we not just get on?" Mm. Like, I'm, I'm all for re- people having different beliefs and religion and and any religion you want, you can have, mate. Like, but I'm, I'm an atheist. I don't go around <laughs> criticizing everyone with a religion or believe in a god or believe in Buddha and all that saying, oh, that's a load of fucking bollocks and you're all delu- deluded because that's not fair. I'd stick to my what I believe and what my family, how my family unit bring themselves up and stuff like that and crack on with that and accept everyone else's view of that. And I just objected to him coming out, especially um, as a high-profile rugby player, saying that gay people are going to go to hell which he may believe well he clearly does believe mm. but it's fucking ridiculous to come out and say that especially in this day and age mm. I completely agree I completely and I mentioned I did a column for Rugby Pass on it and you'd have played against you and Murray at some point yeah um, weird character <laughs> very weird character <laughs> well, very yeah. good rugby player very good scrummager he wasn't by the time I played with the okay, Worcester fine. by the way <laughs> <laughs> maybe the laws changed at that point but um, he's a uh, Born again Christian, but I had a big issue with him. We were on the bus on the way back from a game at Worcester, probably lost as ever away Shock, from home. You've got an issue with someone. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. We're playing cards and having a few beers at the back of the bus, and he came to came down the back and started preaching to us about how wrong we were. I was like, "You and just wind your neck in." I don't get involved with your beliefs. They didn't play on a Sunday. 
I didn't go around to his house and say, get your kit on, you've got to play because we need you or anything like that. That's that's what he does. That's what he's written into his contract. That's okay. Whether you agree with it or not, that's the way he leads, leads his life. Yeah. But don't come to the back of the bus and start preaching to lads who are having a beer and playing cards. That was, that was all I lived for those days. Yeah. <laughs> um, everyone can lead their life and live their life in any which way they want to. Um, when you start preaching your strong beliefs on other people in, in terms of religion and those people don't follow that, that religion as closely as you do or don't follow religion mm. at all or whatever, you're going to cause problems. Especially when you are... And it's a strong stance by the Australian Rugby Union. Israel Folau, make no bones about it, is... One of their best players. One of, if their not best their player? best player. Yeah. Six months away from the World Cup. He's had warnings before about it. And they've terminated his contract. And he can appeal, whether he does or not. Um, what I liked... I don't care. He, he, I like Michael the way they've sacked him. interview about it. Well, he, when he came out and said, look, after the first lot, we, we said, look, Izzy or whatever, that you can have your beliefs, mate, and we'll stick by you as a, as a team. You're part of our team. Everyone has different beliefs and thingy within the squad. But when you put on the gold jersey and you're a rugby player and you're making people in the world or out in the rugby community feel like they're not welcome here or not wanted because they're gay, then you know none of the, none of the team can stand by that. No. And you know they didn't have a choice for that, which was fair play to them. Yeah, so. I mean it's clear cut with. With Israel, for me, um, what he's done is wrong and they've taken the appropriate action. The big one for me is obviously Billy and whether that's been misinterpreted, whether he hasn't really thought about it mm. before tweeting. And again, you tweeted Billy as well, didn't you? Uh, again, just... You <laughs> know, What's your relationship like with a Billy? Bit of a, he, well, he, he plays for Saracens and I so play for Harlequins. Him. So you hate him is what you're saying? I'm saying there's, there's always a little... What about bit, when, you know. when you come okay, together oh, in mate, the England me, team? No, you guys, well, we, your mates I always when they used on, to. Don't yeah. be mean to him, he's retired. I always got on really well with Bill. Um, and he's an un unbelievable player, great bloke. Just on this occasion, that we have obviously disagree with it. But again, I've done it. I don't want to make light of it by saying, oh, I've just done it as, as a bit of a joke, I think. I haven't. I've done it because I disagree with him. But I've just tried doing it in a little bit more of a, come on, mate, like a bit of a laugh with it. Mm. Cause it but not trying to make it not serious. It is a serious issue and a serious topic. But come on, let's move on. And I just think Bill struggled to articulate it a little bit in that yeah. Instagram post he did. Yeah. I, I, I got that he wanted to support his beliefs and he'd had a lot of shit. I presume where well, he said in it a lot of shit, telling him you're out of order and all that lot, and he was like, "No, don't question me for my religion." And but I just don't think he articulated it very well. Um, I don't think he is um, homophobic. I don't think um, he's a nasty bloke. I just think he made a bit of a mistake on yeah. on this one. And what I don't get is there's actually been a lot of backlash the other way saying. Hang on now, you're telling you're, you've sacked Izzy for Lau, you've reprimanded Billy um, for their faith, and but your argument is that rugby is inclusive and should allow everyone to race, creed, religion, sexual orientation, sexual orientation. But actually, you're discriminating against someone for their coming out and believing in their religion mm. openly. Yeah. So there's a lot of people saying mm. that, saying, "Hang on a minute," you're saying. They're being out of order to the LGBT community, but actually you're in return being out of order to someone who's got religious beliefs, which is a huge amount of Polynesian rugby players that we have playing in the Premiership. But no one attacked them first. It's dangerous for the young Polynesian kid, God-fearing, that's growing up playing rugby, that is struggling with the idea of coming out. Like, that's when it's dangerous. It's not Pol It doesn't have to be Polynesian either. It can be yeah. absolutely anyone. You know, man girl, woman, boy, whatever, um, these are, you know, whether you like it or not, you're an icon. You're a, you know, a lot of people look up to Billy Vanapola, a lot of people would look up to Israel Folau, and there'll be a kid somewhere that wants to be Billy Vanapola trying to smash people on a Sunday morning or a Saturday for the school, whatever, 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 who has these 
things in his head saying, I want to come out, I want to say this, but Billy says it's wrong. So, And I want to be Billy when I'm on a rugby field. It, it, it doesn't go hand in hand. So rugby is all-inclusive. And I, like, like Joe said then, extremist views that segregate and uh, keep people apart from the inclusivity of rugby, uh, that ain't welcome. And that's that's what it is for me. No, just spot on. The best bit about it for me is the way that the whole rugby community has stood up and said this isn't on. Yeah. You know, this you know, Israel Falah, what you're saying is wrong. Um, you know, and there are you go through my my Twitter line today where I've I've done this piece for Rugby Pass and I've got people coming at me saying I'm a hypocrite because I'm not like Joe said, I'm not Are including. you sure they say the crit bit at the end? <laughs> Hippo. Very good. Hippo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Joe. I'm, I'm not advocating. Yeah, I don't want to say everyone should get sacked for this, that, and the other. But no, that Israel Folau's situation was different because he'd already been on a warning yeah. and he'd signed a contract that specifically said, or well, I think it specifically said that you're not to post homophobic or offensive tweets moving forward. Yeah. And, or it Instagram did. posts. Or Instagram posts. Apologies. But I, I also credit to Saracens as well for coming out and saying, um, you know, they in their statement it says something like that. That's Billy's beliefs and what he said isn't in line with their values uh, yeah. as a club. So, you know, it's, it, it's a tricky situation. Again, Billy Vanapola is Saracens' best player or one of their best players. Um, and he hasn't actually gone out and started the conversation himself but he has made mistakes and they've reprimanded him given him a warning do you think that the saracens punishment warning whatever you want to call it is, has been enough yeah i mean we don't know the internal uh, disciplinary process that they've gone through ultimately he's been given a warning saracens have distanced themselves from what he said uh, and said it doesn't sit in line with their values as a club uh, i'm sure there's something in there where they've said to billy like what happened to israel falau don't do that again you do it again it's you know this is your first warning, you run the risk. Now, the thing for me is Billy hasn't taken it down, has he? Yeah. Do you know why he hasn't taken it down? Or are you surprised that he hasn't taken it down? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe when he listens to this pod, he will. Unlikely. Yeah, it's one of them, isn't it? I think he should take it down as, you know, you've been reprimanded. Everyone's seen what you've said and done. Take it down as a mark of respect, probably. But we shall see. But I did like, <laughs> last thing... Bristol social media and Bristol, <laughs> what they their, their comms, whatever it is, they've, that got department, an award, they've got an award for the season, haven't oh. they? Surely. They're, they're, they played its raining men to Billy Van after the game. The, I don't think really? they played it to him. Well, no. They okay. didn't say they played, on the tannoy, oh, this, right one's this, no, this, this one's for you, Bill. No, this one's for. No, I get it right now. So they played. Oh, the, I think it was a bit harsh to boo him. Well, Pete, yeah. But then. No, that's the fans. Well, but, that's yeah, fans, no, but then when you have such a divisive. As long as the booing was actually not like a hatred booing. Well, what is mean? a hatred like a... boo? Can you show me? Can we hear? Boo! And what's a jovial boo? Boo! I don't think you can... It was quite jovial. Though, yeah. So. <laughs> I don't think you can distinguish. Are Fif you taking the piss 50, now? You can for you, but 50... Fucking boo! Well, you, or... what, what, who says fucking boo? <laughs> <laughs> or boo! <laughs> I don't think you can distinguish every voice of... 15,000 or so Bristol fans booing him. But what I did like is, um, and along the line of Joe's tweets, uh, a bit of comedy in it, mm. while not trying to get away from the fact it's a very serious matter, Bristol played over the tannoy. It's raining men. 